final speaker for this session is Evelyn Tullock. Evelyn is a professional practice fellow at the University of Otago in New Zealand. She works in the uh, clinical practice area of the university and she supervises students as well as maintaining a caseload there. Today she's representing the results of her master's thesis in clinical practice, uh, clinical, no, start again, clinical Pilates directional bias assessment, reliability and predictive value. Please welcome her to the stage. Thank you to those who have uh, stayed. Um, I just want to present, as, as it's been announced, the results of my uh, master's thesis. Um, now, Pilates uh, has become increasingly popular as a treatment tool, but there, has been, um, not, there hasn't been a great deal of research to date uh, to test these methods. This study uh, tested the core principles behind the DMA clinical Pilates approach. The key behind this is a uh, simple directional bias model uh, analogous to the McKenzie directional preference. Um, study one tested how reliable the directional bias was um, between two raters, and the results of this um, bias assessment then um, informed the second study, which tested the ability to predict the outcomes of two exercise conditions via a crossover trial. 35 participants were required um, to detect a 15% difference in the two exercise conditions. Um, now, it typically takes uh, four to six weeks of therapeutic, therapeutic exercise to restore dynamic postural stability and uh, muscle function following a lower limb injury. However, research suggests that the traditional rehabilitation does not fully reverse these deficits. So how do we fix these deficits? This study tested whether asymmetrical deficits identified uh, in a simple clinical assessment could guide treatment. Three simple tests compared one side to the other to identify a directional bias. This was done by um, HOP, the uh, four-point kneel exercise, and um, a prone single leg extension exercise. Now, Antidotal evidence from the DMA clinical Pilates suggests their protocol appears to produce immediate, within one session, improvements in dynamic postural stability. Now, a directional bias is made up of um, two components, um, a lateral bias plus a surgical bias. Now, the lateral bias is the poorer performing side and treatment focuses on exercises biased to this deficient side. The part of the assessment and rehabilitation approach that distinguishes DMA clinical Pilates protocols from others is the identification of a sagittal bias. Now, it has been observed clinically that the position that the pelvis is in uh, during exercise can lead to immediate changes in dynamic postural stability and muscle performance deficits. So the second part of the, com um, the second component is to identify that pelvic position um, that leads to these immediate uh, improvements. And this is done uh, by exercises with the pelvis and the posterior pelvic tilt and the anterior pelvic tilt. Now the matched directional bias becomes that pelvic position that resulted in the better outcomes and this is used to improve the poorer performing side. So rehabilitation uses asymmetrical directionally biased exercises matched to improve these deficits which are referred to as match bias exercises. Not only does the directional bias assessment identify um, postural stability deficits, which will be tested in study one, it is also believed to predict the outcome of, uh, the functional outcome following exercises uh, matched and unmatched to this directional bias, which was tested in study two. Um, now, the, uh, the, second, the first part of the study tested how reliable this um, directional bias assessment was between um, two raters. 
um, and each rater independently assessed each participant for their matched bias and classified them into one of four subgroups. Now the outcome measures for the study were um, single heel raises and rebound hopping, at, uh, comparing one side to the other, and this was performed at baseline, following two extension bias exercises and a flexion bias exercise. The two extension bias exercises were single leg kick and four point kneel, and this was followed by a reassessment, which was compared to baseline. A flexion bias exercise was performed, followed by a reassessment, which co was compared to both baseline and following those extension bias exercises. Now, the reliability um, of the two raters matched um, bias classifications was determined, and results um, found a substantial agreement with a kappa of 0.75 and a prevalence adjusted, bias adjusted kappa of 0.76. So this means that the two raters were um, able to independently observe the same dynamic postal stability deficits and the immediate changes to these deficits following exercises in the two different pelvic positions. Now following the first study, um, the participants were randomized into two groups for the second study, which was the predictive validity testing. Um, and this was tested via a crossover trial where group one participants um, performed matched bias exercises followed by unmatched bias exercises and group two performed these exercises in the opposite order. The unmatched bias exercises were with the pelvis and the side in the opposite, um, were opposite to what the matched bias um, was. Now the outcome measures used for the uh, crossover trial were time to stabilization and rebound hop and uh, these were performed at baseline and following each of the crossover period exercises. Now time to stabilization was where the participant jumped up, touched a mark, landed on a force plate and balanced for uh, 20 seconds. Anterior, posterior, and medial lateral ground reaction forces were analyzed. For rebound hop, time in the air and time on the ground were analyzed. In each of the crossover period exercises, the participants um, performed four asymmetrical um, exercises and each of those exercises were performed for four minutes. Now, flexion bias exercises were made um, asymmetrical and right bias by just exercising the right leg, having the trunk rotated around to the right, and having the hands placed to the right along the bar. And extension bias exercises were made left bias by having both legs to the left with only the left leg exercised, in this case, just the left leg exercised, and having the hands placed to the left along the bar. Now, a 15.4% immediate improvement was found uh, for time to stabilization in the medial lateral direction. This was um, following the match bias exercises. The participants were able to um, stabilize significantly faster than following unmatched bias exercises. And they were able to do this with more consistency following the match bias compared to the unmatched bias exercise. For rebound hop, the participants spent significantly less time on the ground between the hops following match bias compared to unmatch bias exercise, meaning they were more balanced and organized to hop again. Now Altman's methods of analyzing crossover trials was used for the analysis, and this resulted in both period effects and treatment period interactions being observed which is said to lead to um, a decrease in the treatment effect, or in our case, the predictive validity. Um, the treatment period interactions are when the um, effects of the first period exercises carry over into the second period, uh, and this was due to us having no washout. You can see here that the match bias, following match bias exercises, the participants in the second period 
didn't deteriorate as much as what would have been expected. And in this group two, who did unmatched bias first, they didn't improve as uh, well as expected. If there was no treatment period interactions, then the graphs would cross in the middle and these distances would be the same in each period. Also lowering our predictive validity for the time to stabilisation was the power of the study was lowered by 13 participants. Now we had a second hypothesis which predicted that match bias exercises would result in an immediate improvement from baseline and unmatched bias exercises would result in an immediate degradation from baseline. But um, our study wasn't powered for uh, repeated measures and over analysis. So this was used as a pilot study to inform um, future sample size calculations. And we found here that uh, following match bias exercises, the participants um, were able to stabilise significantly faster compared to baseline for time to stabilisation in the anterior posterior direction. And following unmatched bias exercises, the participants um, weren't able to hop as high um, as following baseline. So what did we find? We found a substantial agreement between the two raters for the directional bias assessment. A larger study um, is in progress to be able to test this interrelator reliability um, more significantly. Um, also, the identification of a directional bias can predict the outcome of performing matched bias and unmatched bias exercises. This clinical assessment was validated experimentally, and these immediate within one session changes in dynamic postural stability following match bias exercise may lead to more effective rehabilitation. But conversely, exercises not matched to um, a directional bias may be detrimental to uh, results. Now the participants in the study had recovered from lower limb injuries, and so results might be expected to be more significant in a patient group compared to these patients in this study. Um, thank you for listening.